welcome to the Passenger Seat Podcast, a podcast designed to fill your passenger seat with chat about classic cars, all recorded from my 1968 Morris Minor Peggy. I'm Becca, uh, and today I'm going to tell you all about the International Women's Day meet uh, that we hosted with the Women Drivers Social Club and the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club uh, this Sunday just gone. Uh, When this goes out, International Women's Day is tomorrow and uh, we've had a fantastic uh, celebration of that um, on Sunday. So uh, I can tell you kind of what we got up to uh, and why it was kind of so important to do another one this year. So International Women's Day has always been super important to uh, the Women Drivers Social Club because it's kind of why it founded last year. We hosted the International Women's Day meet at Cywell, which you might remember some of the interviews from, um, on the same weekend last year. And so many of the women that came along were so excited by having had the event and really enjoyed the experience of having that kind of women-centered space within automotive, um, that they asked me to start doing kind of more uh, events and so we started the Women Drivers Social Club um, as a result of that. So this year uh, we obviously had to host another one and uh, this was now my seventh I think uh, Women Drivers Social Club meet. Um, So I've had a, a very busy year with it all and uh, my biggest one so far. So that was really exciting. So I had had a recommendation from a friend, uh, Arthur Mitchell of the Singer Owners Club to get in touch with the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club um, because they have a lot of women that are working in their club um, and at their um, headquarters. So quite unusual for uh, a car club. Um, and they have a fantastic CEO called Claire and a fantastic marketing uh, person called Lydia and so I got in touch with them and I said I'm looking to host an International Women's Day thing Um, would you guys be interested in us hosting it at yours Um, because Arthur had been along with the Singer Owners Club and done a tour of the um, archives there uh, and had kind of a, a really nice little day out um, and walk around the workshops and stuff that they've got there and they have got a really fascinating archive um, so it was set to be a good day out but also uh, Arthur has a shed full of buses uh, a very large shed obviously um, in the area uh, and said that if we were interested in putting something on there then he would be able to uh, bring one of the buses over and take people out for bus rides. So we had the outlines of a really fantastic day. And uh, I had a meeting with Claire and Lydia and I can remember getting off that call and just having the biggest smile on my face. Uh, I turned around to Jamie who was sat behind me and I said, that was really good um, because They were just so enthusiastic. They really understood the Women Drivers Social Club's message. They really kind of liked the idea of what the club was about and uh, they wanted to see much more of it in um, the classic car space. And so I had a feeling right from the off, which is always so nice, uh, that they were gonna be a great club to work with. Uh, And I do recommend that if you are looking for somewhere interesting and unusual to go um, and have a look around with a car club or something like that, then get in touch with them um, because uh, it can be uh, a really brilliant day and they are looking for more fantastic ways to use the brilliant space that they've got um, down near Toaster. So really good call with them and we we set up kind of me and Lydia keeping in touch uh, and uh, getting things all sorted. We organised a buffet uh, for everyone and I organised getting tickets out to everyone and 
we had kind of available space for around 30 cars um, but obviously if multiple people were coming in car in the same car then we had space for even more than that people which uh, was kind of on par with what we'd had the space for last year um, but this year we actually managed to sell out and it was our first sell out event so we had filled all of the car parking spaces that we really had available to us uh, and in total with uh, the couple of guests that they invited we had over 40 people in attendance and I'm not going to attempt to whilst driving along remember and name every single person that came along but I am so grateful to everyone that came along and we had such a vast array of cars uh, which is one of my favourite things about going and organising uh, Women Driver Social Club events is that we've got such a breadth of um, cars within the club and you never know what somebody's going to kind of turn up with on the day so that was fantastic so after quite a lot of emailing back and forth um, everything was finalised um, apart from in the week before um, we were put in contact with uh, their preferred insurance uh, provider which is RH Insurance um, and they had said that they were really keen to come along with a team of women from their office um, do uh, a little quiz and a little presentation about uh, things to look out for when you're buying classic car insurance um, and also really brilliantly sponsored the event uh, I'd been taking ticket prices for um, covering the cost of the buffet and stuff like that and uh, but the REEC were happy to kind of cover the staffing costs and everything um, but then RH Insurance came in and said look we, we really like what you guys are doing and we want to sponsor it and so that meant that we were able to decide to donate uh, the money that had been raised from the tickets as well as a donation from the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club uh, to a charity and uh, we spent a bit of time thinking about uh, what sort of charity we wanted it to go to and I came across this charity on uh, online called the Girls Network which sets up girls from disadvantaged backgrounds with inspiring female mentors uh, to help them kind of achieve their full potential um, and that seemed to fit really well with the idea that as a club we try to um, pull other women up and help each other out um, and we've got a wide range of ages as well and it's been really nice to see kind of some of the partnerships and friendships that have formed across um, generations and support that's been offered um, because of the club uh, and a lot of these people wouldn't have met otherwise but also I thought that there's actually quite a lot of brilliant women within the Women Drivers Social Club such clever people and um, some of them might be interested in being mentors themselves so by being able to get them to donate uh, and bring this charity to their attention uh, then they might be able to kind of look into uh, signing up to being a mentor themselves which um, hopefully some of them will do but it meant that even before we'd started having a really good day ourselves we knew that the day was going to do good uh, by being able to donate 500 pounds to the girls network <laughs> The day arrives and um, we've got a fantastic guest list. Um, I set off from my house and uh, I'm driving along the A45 and I see a message flash up above my GPS uh, from my sister who was in convoy with my parents. My sister was driving her Hillman, California and my parents were driving Nelly. Nelly is our 1935 singer Le Mans and she is the car on the logo for the Women Driver Social Club. Um, she went on the logo because I knew I wanted the logo colours to be that of women's suffrage um, but also because she is the car that kind of got me to fall in love with classic cars and things like that. She's been a car that's been in the family because I came along 
Um, so it's not a car that I'm necessarily massively associated with in the scene, that's Peggy. Um, but she was also an important car to me, so that's how she ended up on the logo. And uh, she's had a, a quite a few years, um, but my mum pestered my dad and said, really, for the one year anniversary, Nelly should be there. Um, unfortunately, the anniversary lands in March and it was absolutely freezing. Um, so they had gone along in layers and layers of clothing. At points, my mum had two pairs of gloves on. Um, open top obviously because it was sunny and dry just very very cold um, and they were driving along the A45 pulled into her services uh, to just do a quick pit stop there uh, and Nelly had refused to start again um, so they were according to my sister's <laughs> message 20 miles away and I was 22 miles away and at that point I look up and I see a sign that says services uh, so I pull in and as expected, there is uh, a very lovely Hillman, California, and my sis and my parents uh, there in Nelly. We decided we need to kind of bump start it. We think it's probably the starter motor, um, so we managed to, after a couple of times, to successfully bump start it across uh, the forecourt. Um, my sister and I then run over to our cars, hop in. They pull out onto the motorway. Um, my sister continues to follow them. Uh, in case there's any further issues uh, but I have to zoom on a little bit ahead to make sure that I got there before everybody else um, and to make sure that kind of everything was ready uh, and that there was a spot saved for them um, because Lydia had told me that there was going to be a Rolls-Royce Spectre one of the brand new electric ones uh, there and that they were going to park that right outside the front and so I thought it'd make a really nice photo if we parked Nelly kind of opposite to it and um, then kind of put everybody in the middle of the two first cars so that was um, that was the plan so I needed to make sure that that space was saved and also just kind of introduce myself get set up and things before people started to arrive so I, I got there managed to have kind of about 10 minutes getting sorted uh, there was already one member there um, quite early and keen and um, then kind of started parking myself up, sorting out, getting the flag and that ready, uh, by which time uh, my sister and my parents arrived and uh, we got them all nicely parked up and then people really started to kind of start filtering in. Uh, and like I said, it was our, our biggest attendance. And like I said, it was not only our biggest attendance, uh, but also uh, our biggest array of cars and, and people there and what's also been really nice with these events is that it seems to be that once you've come to one you really want to keep coming to the rest of them but also um, when people start posting in the Facebook group about the events I think that really puts people at ease about coming to another one um, and that's how we're, we're really seeing the numbers growing because having over 40 people was 10% of our groups membership um, and those who came along as kind of friends and family um, with the people that uh, were in the group all ended up joining the Facebook group on the day the girls from RH joined on the day as well uh, so that when they're not working they want to come along uh, to the events as well so really so much to look forward to uh, going forward because the group just keeps growing <laughs> Once everyone had arrived and our bus for our bus trip had also arrived, uh, we grabbed ourselves the group photo that I was talking about uh, and then headed inside to um, have a quick introduction, quick fire safety chat um, and then start splitting people off. So we split the group into two, um, sent one group off on uh, the bus and then the other group uh, had the first archive tour and then switched. So I was in the group that had the archive tour first and then the bus ride second. Um, but I kind of made sure to pop in uh, once the bus group had come back and, and check that they'd had a, a nice time and that they were all ready for their archive tours and stuff. Uh, 
the bus that we were on was a comma and it was a comma that we had been on in our January meet and people are now joking that every woman drivers social club now needs to have a bus ride um, so I'm not sure how that will go um, but it was interesting that these car buses were kind of 40 something years apart and um, but the same make um, and quite quite different and, and a huge leap in terms of technology and stuff within those 40 years. The archive tour was absolutely fascinating. Um, I think all car clubs are probably envious of the level of detail and information um, that uh, the Rolls Royce Club have about every single car that was ever made and is available there. Any correspondence and stuff like that is all there. Um, and we were really fortunate on our trip that the um, chairman of the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club was there with his wife um, and so they provided some extra context in terms of their experience of getting information out of the archive um, and stuff like that as well as kind of having the, the archive worker Alan there to kind of show us around and uh, it was fascinating to kind of hear all of the information and my favourite kind of tidbit that we got of the day from that was the fact that they do indeed have the plans and stuff of really rare one-off um, exclusives that are totally totally private um, they were given to them and uh, they don't really think that they should have them uh, because they can't look at them so they have to be super locked up hidden away um, and there was a bit of a joke that if they did look, someone would have to be shot. Um, but things like the Sultan of Brunei, um, and they're all kind of very private Rolls Royces and stuff that have been made over the years. All of those, the details are there, it's just no one can look at them. Um, but the archive is hugely useful for um, one of the IH girls had um, a, a Rolls Royce, I think it is. Uh, that had got uh, a lilac leather interior and lilac carpets and stuff like that and she wanted to know why and they were able to find a correspondence between uh, the owner and uh, Rolls Royce some years after she had purchased it when she sent it back and said make it lilac and that sort of detail I think all classic car owners are so envious of because uh, the rest of us are just trying to work out why on earth um, an owner would make that decision years and years ago and trying to work out kind of how a car's ended up the way it has um, whereas she could trace down to down to the date uh, when these lilac carpets and leather seats had been fitted which is just amazing um, and then there was also loads of memorabilia loads of kind of pieces of um, Henry Royce's personal collection and stuff like that these huge great engines that were cut away in places that you could look into uh, so it was absolutely brilliant and I reckon we probably could have spent a lot more time looking over it all um, if we wanted uh, but then it was time for lunch and we had a lovely buffet uh, where it was a great opportunity for people to kind of move around the groups that they'd been in and, and talk to others about uh, what they'd seen what they'd experienced with that uh, the bus ride was hugely popular, we did a lovely little tour around kind of the, the surrounding areas, went over towards uh, Stoke Bruin uh, Canal which was unfortunately not as pretty as it could be because it's been drained for maintenance. Um, but it, it's a fantastic bus and I'm so grateful for Arthur uh, bringing it over uh, and taking us out uh, and we had a fantastic time but also uh, some of the girls who are really interested in mechanics or are indeed mechanics. Uh, Arthur lifted up the kind of engine hole and let them all have a look inside and, and learn a bit more about how it was all working and how it all went together because here we go it's a two stroke uh, six cylinder diesel engine I think um, so people were quite intrigued and, and nobody had predicted that it was going to be a two stroke engine uh, they were all quite surprised at that So after a fantastic lunch, uh, we headed into the beautiful Lecture Theatre, which of course has a Rolls Royce sat in it. 
um, and had a chat from the uh, RH girls about some of the things that might be a bit confusing about insurance and kind of learning how to avoid losing your car um, if it gets scrapped and stuff like that um, or if it's a write-off getting scrappage back and very useful stuff um, and then they did uh, a little quiz uh, for um, people to win a £100 off voucher uh, for insurance with them and it was uh, if you thought it was one answer you put your hand on your head if you thought it was another answer you put your hand on your tail and uh, it got down to uh, two people it was Hannah and Carly and they were made to go up the front so that we could all adjudicate uh, as uh, a tight fought final was carried out um, and Carly eventually won. So that's Carly from Miss Hubnut. And, uh, but our H were brilliant and ended up giving them both uh, a little prize. Um, then it was time for cake and wrapping up in the beautiful conservatory. Um, and uh, also the giving of uh, the randomly drawn uh, champagne and chocolates that again was provided by RH and uh, saying goodbyes and uh, grabbing some last minute photos together uh, before people started to head home. Fortunately, in order to be able to head home, Nelly did indeed need a bit of a bump start. Uh, but fortunately, there was quite a few willing women uh, to give our mascots a bit of a bump and uh, we managed to get her going and uh, Tash actually was stood at the other side of the car park and, and filmed us all running along and um, I think it was Sammy got a beautiful photo on film of us all pushing Nelly which is probably one of my favourite photos of the weekend. Um, so. Uh, some brilliant memories and as much as uh, bump starting a car isn't ideal um, I don't think it would have been Nelly if she hadn't uh, been a little bit cheeky uh, in front of everyone but it's given my dad a little project to do for the next time she needs to come out so I followed my parents home and we got home with no issue uh, and then it was time for me to poodle off towards my house uh, and I think I'd left at about uh, half eight in the morning uh, and got home for about half seven so big long day um, but this weekend with Ruster Bowl and also uh, Haggerty's Hangout on Saturday I'm going to be having an even longer day so hopefully Peggy and myself are well rested and well prepared for that. International Women's Day, Day meet for 2024. Um, if you are listening to this and you haven't already joined the Women Drivers Social Club, it's a brilliant space for women who are interested in automotive. I'm so proud of the little community that we've built up there and you'd be most welcome to follow us over. Um, it's been great to see people coming over from posts about that and the posts uh, that Steph put out about uh, Matty and Faye's uh, Little Wolseley. Um, we're creeping up on 400 members, which a year on is just fantastic. Um, and I'm so pleased uh, that um, people are, are still enjoying um, and getting something out of the group. If you're going to be at Rustable this weekend, um, I will be with the Women Driver Social Club, I think. Um, but also, I will be on the stage as well doing a chat about auto women with the fantastic Katie from uh, Wrenching Wrench and uh, Claire from the Classic Car Loan Project and Classic Car Claire on uh, Instagram. They're both amazing women and we're going to have a fantastic chat um, during one of the brilliant panels that they are hosting um, on the, the Rustable stage. But that's it from me. Hopefully I see some of you this weekend. Please come and say hello. And also I do have uh, stickers and pins for Passenger Seat Podcast if you would like any. 
um, just ask me. I won't necessarily have them out on display or anything, um, but you can absolutely grab some off me. Um, but in the meantime, drive safely and happy motoring.